So about one in four women who are 20 years and older have some type of pelvic floor dysfunction or disorder. So that can include leakage of urine or having to go to the bathroom more often, leakage of stool, or feeling like their vagina or uterus is coming down. A common misconception with pelvic floor disorders are that, or is that uh, they only occur in the elderly or they occur at a certain age, and unfortunately that's not true. Uh, they are more common in people who are in their 40s, 50s, and older, but they can happen in younger people for various reasons. And so if you're experiencing that, I would encourage you to talk to your primary care provider about it, but um, unfortunately, it can happen throughout the lifespan. Unfortunately, um, people who have gynecological cancers, who undergo radiation and surgery, they are also prone to having pelvic floor disorders. Um, and so I would, even, even if you are um, going through these treatments, I would recommend letting your provider know about pelvic floor disorders that you're experiencing because we can often do things to help improve your quality of life. So let your provider know. Overactive bladder is very common. Both men and women experience it, and I see it very commonly in my practice. There are two main types of urinary leakage. One is called stress incontinence. That's leakage when you cough, sneeze, and laugh. The other is overactive bladder or urgency incontinence. So that's leakage with urgency. Um, and sometimes people can have both, and that's called mixed incontinence. So those are the most common types of incontinence. For stress incontinence, besides pelvic floor physical therapy, the more involved treatments would be things like the mid-urethral sling and urethral bulking. For overactive bladder or urgency incontinence, um, in addition to pelvic floor, pelvic floor physical therapy, there are medications, and then the more involved treatments would be things like um, sacral neuromodulation, uh, percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation, um, Botox in the bladder, and I know those sound like big words, but essentially those interventions help the bladder to relax so that it doesn't spasm and cause a person to leak or go to the bathroom more often.